a lot of people are not going to be able to make a million dollars a year from their job alone. It's just facts. And so what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to- You're buying some crap you don't need. Everybody buys crap because our whole society is designed to get you to spend money from the day you're born, but you don't need to. What's up everybody? I am Jasprit Singh from the MinorityMindset.com where money minds rethink rich. When we talk about becoming financially free or wealthy, that number for a lot of people is a million dollars, being a millionaire. And so I sat down with one of the sharks from Shark Tank, Kevin O'Leary, and he's gonna be talking about what it takes to make a million dollars, and let's jump right into it. We've been seeing a massive boom in the retail trading and investing space how should a young person invest their money? Because your, your mother clearly was big on dividend stocks, things that pay interest. Is that the best way to go forward now for a young person? Well, there's a difference between day trading and investing. Um, there's nothing wrong with day trading. And I, and I think there obviously there's over 20 million people doing it right now just on Robinhood alone. So it's been a very successful platform. But that's not the same as investing. Um, it's very, very difficult over a long period of time to beat the index when you're day trading because you have, you, you know, you tend to be concentrated on just a very few names and you're constantly trading them in and out. And I think it's fun in some ways and nothing wrong with it. But I always tell people if you get winnings from day trading, take them and put them in to an index of some kind that you just store away, that you don't risk. You just let it sit there and grow, whether that's 10 or 15 percent, whatever it is. That's investing when you do that. Day trading is a form of gambling, which is really exciting and there's nothing wrong with it. I, I think it's a wonderful thing that people do it, but it's not going to help you long term because very, very, very few people can beat the indexes over a long period of time day trading. So you're saying if somebody made a lot of money off of the GameStop saga, take some of that money and put it into an index that's going to uh, help you make money for the long term. Exactly. That's the right strategy and that's the right thing to do for for your retirement, you've got to have that thing just compounding. You know, get any one of the robo apps and 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 do it that way. Because a trading platform where you're picking a name and you know day trading in and out are, is very very difficult to grow wealth with. Are you worried at all about the health of the stock market because of all the retail trading going on? We have so many people entering the stock market. Maybe they know what they're doing, maybe they don't. Uh, but a lot of people are, are trading with leverage. I think we have the highest margin trading ever. And a lot of people are coming into the market with very high expectations, hoping to double their money in a very short amount of time. Is the stock market going to crash because of that? Well, the market's always correct. And sometimes as much as 40%. I don't see that anytime soon because we have a very, very boring economy and we're about to get you know, $1.9 trillion stimulus package, and now a room of a $3 trillion infrastructure package. That's a tremendous amount of stimulus. So, you know, asset classes like stocks are likely to do well during that period. But there are times when markets do not do well, and you have to live through that. Uh, it doesn't bother me that, you know, people are actively day trading. Uh, I have no problem with that. I think that, you know, it's, it's just bringing more people into the educational side of investing. And I'm not sure you know, that we're going to have a crash anytime soon. Nobody knows with certainty. But my point is, these are environments that are very good and very you know, productive for stocks. And so my anticipation is they will tend to trend higher. So what advice would you have for someone who is uh, new into the workforce in their late 20s, early 30s? What should they be doing? Would you follow your mom's advice, your mother's advice of a 20% into the stock market, into an ETF? Or, or what would you recommend? Well, you know, I, I have some basic rules. I always say this, never more than 5% in, in any one stock. So if you look at a portfolio, you never want one stock to represent more than 5% of it. You never want a sector like energy or technology to represent more than 20% of the portfolio and have some allocation of fixed income. I'm currently 70% equities, 30% fixed income because fixed income is very expensive these days and I anticipate as interest rates go up, it won't do that well. But the point is it provides stability. The whole idea of um, investing is diversification. You really want to be diversified. And so I use exchange traded funds for that. That works for me. People can pick their own stocks if they wish. But you know, there's all kinds of different philosophies. But at the end of the day, um, you know, if you, if, you, you, if you want to build a nest egg, you've got to have the discipline of diversification and, and monitor your portfolio so that no one position gets too big. That's what happens to people that really get blown up. They don't follow any diversification rules and they end up with one or two stocks representing 40, 50, 60% of their net worth. And when they correct, they get killed. 
Can somebody still follow the model today and become wealthy? I mean, we're, we're in an environment where uh, a lot of people, millennials especially, are, are having a tough time being able to pay their rent. They're having a tough time just being able to get by. How does someone who's now essentially living paycheck to paycheck start putting aside money to invest and become wealthy? Do, do these kind of rules, rules of thumb still apply today? They do because the, the majority of people, and obviously there's, there's exceptions to every rule, but the majority of people spend too much money on crap they don't need. I've noticed that for years. And so I'm very disciplined. You know, I, I don't buy clothes I don't need, I don't wear. I, I learned that from my mother. I, my, you know, my, I wear the same. I've got 25 of these suits, 25 of these ties, 25 of these shirts. I do a huge production run. This is my Shark Tank outfit. I also wear it all the time. It's sort of the same. I don't have to choose what I'm going to wear each day. I already know. And it sounds boring, but it really works for me and I save a ton of money. And so, you know, I'm still saving money when I can. I don't see any reason to waste it. So th there's a lot of change in behavior to save money. I can guarantee you, you don't need to buy three coffees a day at $7 a coffee. That's a total <laughs> waste of money. You see that all the time. Yeah. And people go, go out and pay $25 for lunch. How dumb is that? I mean, I don't do that. You know, I just, it offends me. It's bad karma to, to just waste money like that. So I'll bring some lunch with me. I can't stand spending seven bucks for something that costs 18 cents to make. That's so stupid. Yeah, you know, I think a lot of people look at America, United States as one of the richest poor countries in the world because, so I'll give you an example. My grandparents uh, from the state of Punjab, they were refugees because the state was severed and they lost their homes they lost their family, they lost their land, they lost everything. And my grandfather came to his new home running with no shoes on. And so they were raised with the discipline of you don't need a bunch of stuff in order to survive. You, you, you kind of learn to live with very little. And so I was raised with them. And then when I was going to school and I, it just just the basic things like I, I would I would go to lunch with a brown bag and I would make sure they had to take my brown bag home the next day because I would use their brown bag for the whole semester. You know, it's a little things that, you know, we're in such a rich country where we don't realize that maybe we're being wasteful. And I think, you know, is that so it sounds like that's what you're saying is we're spending a lot of money on things we don't need. We have just so many luxuries, a higher standard of living, which is which is causing people to live broker. Well, the average salary in America is about fifty six thousand dollars. And so there's no question in my mind you can cut 10 percent of your costs. You are wasting money on something. You're buying a third pair of jeans you don't need. You're buying a fifth pair of sneakers you don't need. You're buying some crap you don't need. Everybody buys crap because our whole society is designed to get you to spend money from the day you're born, but you don't need to. It's not necessary. In fact, less is more. There's something beautiful about having a minimalist life and having things that you really cherish. And that was also my mother's philosophy. She would save up for a whole year to buy a Chanel jacket and buy nothing else. And I mean, that was her whole thing. I want to own this jacket for the rest of my life. And when she passed away, there was a huge fight amongst the women in the family trying to get her collection of <laughs> Chanel jackets, which she'd only buy one of every two years. But she bought the highest quality items and not a lot of them. That was her philosophy. And I, I think that really works. So now it looks like, you know, someone wants to become wealthy in this day and age. First thing you got to do is you got to cut some of the expenses. Second, continue investing your money, just like your mother told you to do, your mother did. And like how you said, the third thing is now, what about in terms of making money? Because you built your wealth as an entrepreneur. And obviously now things are very different because we're in a very technological age. If you were stripped of everything, all of your money today, your fame, what would you do to build, rebuild your wealth? I would go back to what I know. And you know, that's, I'm a salesman, I'm a marketing person, that's I've been my whole life. Uh, I would go back and find a product or service or a company that required a good salesperson and I would go work. I mean, that's what I'm used to. I mean, I've been working, you know, I, I took some time off right after the liquidity event for the learning company, but I went right back to work and never stopped. And today, you know, I have a very, very busy schedule doing a whole wide range of things, but there are things I want to do that I really enjoy doing. Um, but I'm, I'm basically, a, at my core, a marketing and sales person. So that's what I would rely on. I think those are the hardest jobs in the world because salesmen are the only people, and saleswomen too, that start at zero each month and have to build back their business. You always start the next month at zero. And then you have to go sell again. And, and you can't even have a company without a great salesperson. You have to sell, sell, sell. That's how it works.
What about cryptocurrency? A lot of people are now jumping into cryptocurrency. Do you think that cryptocurrency, Bitcoin is the future? Is that a way for someone to now build wealth quickly? Well, it is, but it's you know highly valued now. I, I have a 3% allocation in Bitcoin in my own portfolio. I have 5% waiting in gold. So I look at it as a property and it's performed very, very well. But you know, the, the point is, Bitcoin is going, it's a very, very early nascent asset class, a lot of issues with it. The one that's cropping up its head right now that people should be you know, concerned about is institutional clients do not want to own Bitcoin mined using coal to burn for electricity. And that kind of defines what uh, much of how Bitcoin is mined, particularly in countries like China, where you know, they're not compliant on human rights issues, they're not compliant around tariffs, they've got all kinds of issues there. And so there may be a premium coming into this market where, where original virgin coin that's not mined using coal, that's mined sustainably with hydroelectric or some other form of sustainable energy are gonna be worth more than the blood coin mined in China, which is where the majority of coin to date have come from. I also see that now you've also jumped onto YouTube. Welcome to YouTube. Is, is that a feasible way, do you think, for now someone who is looking for a creative way to make money to do that? I think so. I think everybody that wants to play as an entrepreneur going forward after this pandemic has got to have a direct to consumer digital strategy. I mean, even if you're just B2B, business to business, you still need a digital strategy. The whole world has pivoted to using technology to communicate with each other and sell products and services. And so you're going to have to learn how to use social media, how to actually build websites or at least manage that process so that you get something very compelling for people to see your product and service and buy it direct from you. That's the new model. All the companies that I'm invested in that survived to figure that out. And so that's a new change in the American economy. And also, there's no barriers to entry for that. So you're going to have lots of competition from Mumbai, Shanghai, you name it. If you're not willing to work 25 hours a day, eight days a week, they are, and they'll kick your butt. <laughs> yeah, that's the uh, epitome of an entrepreneur right there, right? You have to be willing to work all the time. Yeah. So uh, you now have been investing in dozens of companies on Shark Tank. How, how many companies do you now have an ownership or stake in? Currently, the portfolio is about 36. So how do you manage a portfolio of companies that large? We use a very simple method. We track sales and cash flow because they're private companies. We don't, there's no share price to track. We look at discounted free cash flow. That's how we manage the portfolio. And we monitor, we have a weekly call amongst the management team of O'Leary Ventures every Tuesday morning, had it this morning. And we go right through our portfolio, the good, the bad, and the ugly, because at any one time of the portfolio that big, there's euphoric outcomes occurring and also disasters happening. It's like a giant passion play. It's happening all day long. I'm getting calls of, look, our, somebody wants to buy our company and on the other half, we're going bankrupt. You know, it's sort of, that's the nature of, of the ebb and flow of, of the volatility involved in owning so many companies in so many different sectors. But, you know, overall, it's a very successful group of entrepreneurs. Uh, they use the Shark Tank platform to reduce their customer acquisition costs, which is really magic. My job as sort of an investor is to let the world know that I've made this investment choice. I have millions of followers on social media. It usually helps the company raise more money. It, it, it works in a big symbiotic relationship. And, and we add a lot of value to these companies and we expect to be paid for it. So I think that, that uh, the trend of having multiple streams of income now, because now you, you, you're invested in dozens of companies and each one of these companies are now paying you, that's a very attractive thing. I mean, everybody loves the idea of multiple streams of income. Obviously, one way you can do that is through dividends. But because of Shark Tank, I think a lot of people want to be sharks. They want to be like you. What, what do I need or what does somebody need to be a shark maybe on a smaller scale, like is, is there like a certain amount of capital somebody needs or how can somebody start doing what you do? You know, I have a bit of an advantage because companies approach me all the time and say, look, would you like to invest in this next round? And I say, I have, uh, you know, your round means nothing to me. I, I know what I bring in value. I know what happens when I invest in companies. I know what I can do to, 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 to get your message out and help you sell product but I don't do that for free. So if you want me to be an investor, let's negotiate a very attractive package that aligns my interests with yours. Now that may be through royalties 
or warrants or con convertible debentures or straight equity or straight debt. There's a wide range of different um, you know, outcomes and, and structures, but I don't want to be viewed as just another investor because I'm not, and it may sound arrogant, but the facts are I can change a company's trajectory just using my team and my millions of followers to get the message out there, not just domestically, but globally. And so, you know, I'm very, very selective on which companies I invest in. I want to be able to take it from this platform to this one, and everybody benefits from that, including me. And, um, and, as, and as a result, I don't negotiate too much. I say, this is what I think um, I'm worth. And if, if you don't want to pay that, I'm okay with it. Um, I'm just going to move on to the next opportunity. And that sort of may sound arrogant, but the, my best salespeople are the men and women, my CEOs. When someone comes to me and says, look, we'd like to make you an offer to invest. I say, why don't you just talk to some of my CEOs and see what value I bring. And then you decide if my offer is too rich or you don't want to do it. Um, but, you know, I've got a great team I work with. I've been doing this for almost 20 years. Um, I have some great outcomes, I have some big disasters. I mean, you know, when you have a portfolio that large, you're going to have a lot of bad outcomes, but you're also going to get a few that are just stratospheric, huge hits. And luckily those pay for all your mistakes. That's again, the idea of diversification. And so, you know, every day I'm examining deals. I look at sometimes two or three a day as I did today. And, you know, most of them we don't do because they don't fit. But when we find something interesting, we get right into it and we try and come to an arrangement with the CEO and put them into our portfolio and do everything we can to explode their business. You know, it's interesting. You, you mentioned your, your mom and the importance of dividends to your mom. Uh, anybody who watches Shark Tank knows how much you like royalties. Uh, is that partially influenced because of your mom or is there a different reason why you are uh, uh, such a big fan of uh, getting royalties out of your deals? No, it's probably again for my mother. She, she always said, um, you need to get paid while you wait. That was her mantra. Get paid while you wait because either she owned a stock with dividends or she owned a bond with interest. Getting paid while you wait was her whole thing and never Never spend the principal, just the interest. That was the other lesson she taught me. So my portfolio is like a chicken on a spit dripping cash. Everything pays me something <laughs> each month. And that's how you know we perform at the operating company. We look at our cash flows every single week. It works for me. Remember, in venture investing, it's not return on capital that matters. What matters is return of capital. You haven't made a dime until you get your principal back in a venture investment. And that's very hard to do. So if, if I use a royalty, great. You know, people say to me, oh, royalty, why don't you just do equity? Because a royalty is even better than equity. When the company gets sold, the acquirer, if I have a perpetual royalty on board, comes to me last and says, how do we buy out this royalty or how do we incentivize you to work for us going forward and continue the royalty? Both outcomes I really like, but I'm, I'm staying in the game. Cash is flowing. As I always like to say, what matters in business is Cash flow. Just say it like that. Cash flow. Cash That's flow. What cash flow. Exactly. If you don't have any cash flow, it's no go. You're not going to make any money. It's that simple. I love that. I love that. So a lot of people look at you on Shark Tank as this mean, cold hearted person. I mean, when I told my mom that I was doing this interview, she's like, oh, you're interviewing the mean person. And so <laughs> I, I, I want to ask you, are you this person with a cold ice heart or are you a big teddy bear that people just don't see on Shark Tank? Well, I'm the only shark that tells the truth. I, I, don't, I don't worry about your, your feelings. I worry about your money. And I think it's so disingenuous when, you know, Barbara or Lori says, look, you go, you keep going, you know, you keep mortgaging your house. I'm not going to invest in it, but I think you're, what you're doing is just wonderful. I don't say that. I say your idea has no merit. It's going to go bankrupt. You're going to bankrupt your family. You're going to zero. It's a terrible idea. Why don't we deal with it right now? Why don't you take this behind the barn and shoot it and start something else? Because it's a horrible outcome for you if you completely put your, your family in debt because of your really horrific idea. Now, you may not want to hear that message, but it's still the truth. And if you, you think I'm bad, wouldn't you see what happens in the real world afterwards? Bad ideas go to zero. Whether I tell you that or not, that's just a fact. So it's better that I just deal with the truth. And this again goes to something my mother taught me years ago. She said, always tell the truth and you'll never have to remember what you said. And that is why I do that. 
You know, it's it's sort of, I don't have to remember the truth. It's going to be the truth when I told it to you. And it's going to be the truth 10 years from now. It's still the truth. If you lie to people, you're going to get caught in that lie and you're going to trash your relationships with them. So I'd rather just deal with the the trauma right there and then. And then they call me the mean one. I'm, I'm the nicest guy because I'm the only one telling you the truth. You know, the only reason Barbara gets to the set each year is I buy her a new broom. <laughs> I love it. I think we can all agree that most people want to retire a millionaire. That way you can enjoy your golden years. <sighs> Time to sit on the beach, relax, and order some extra guac. The problem is most people don't retire millionaires. <sighs> on second thought, why don't you just hold the guac? Retiring wealthy is really just about consistency and preparation, and the sooner you start, the richer you'll become. It's a lot more accessible than you might think. If you do it correctly, you can start with just $100 a week and retire a millionaire. Don't just take my word for it. Kevin O'Leary, Mr. Wonderful, did an interview with MarketWatch where he talked about how you can retire a millionaire by investing just $100 a week. In case you don't know who Kevin O'Leary is, he is one of the sharks or investors on Shark Tank, and he's probably the most savage shark there is. If you don't hit that thumbs up button, you're dead to me. Kevin started the interview by talking about how the whole idea of retiring at 65 doesn't make sense anymore because our economy doesn't support it and because most people aren't doing enough to retire by 65. A hundred million Americans have zero dollars, nothing invested for retirement right now and this became painfully true during this 2020 pandemic. As soon as the economy shut down, people panicked. Not because they were worried about what was going on with the pandemic, but because so many Americans were living hand to mouth. They made a dollar and then they spent a dollar. And actually for a lot of Americans, it was you make a dollar and then you spend a dollar plus a quarter with the help of your credit card. When the economy shut down, lots of businesses that Kevin O'Leary is a part of and invested in were trying to get money or loans from the government. And that's when he found out that a lot of the companies that he's investing in have these business owners that have great companies, but these business owners have no money invested or saved for retirement. That's why according to him, the first step to getting that million dollars is by doing what he calls the 90 day test. Look at every dollar and every penny you earned over the last 90 days. This could be from your job, your side hustle, your business, your investments, whatever. Add up all the money you made over the last 90 days. Then do the same thing with your expenses. Pull out your bank statements and your credit card statements and add up all the transactions you made over the last 90 days and look at how much money you spent. Now compare the two numbers. Most people are spending just as much money as they're making or they're spending more money that they're making through the help of their credit card where now they have to make up this difference by paying 15, 20, 25 percent interest to the credit card. This spending habit of spending more money that you're making is destroying your net worth because your money is constantly going out and it's compounding for your credit card company making them rich while it's keeping you broke. Once you see where your money is going, that's when you can do something about it. Most people are spending a lot of money on stuff that they don't need. According to Kevin, most people should be able to cut down their expenses by a minimum of 15% by just doing one thing, buying less crap. But Jaspreet, my cousin Bunty told me that Gucci is an investment. Unless you're getting paid to wear it, it's not an investment. Then put aside $100 a week minimum and invest it so you can retire a millionaire and now we're gonna work backwards to see how to do that. The average life expectancy for somebody in a America is between 75 and 80 years old. And if you want to retire at 65, you need to know how much money you're going to need to retire that way you don't run out of money. To keep things simple, let's say that you and your spouse need $50,000 a year after taxes to be able to live free and maintain your lifestyle. When you turn 65, you better have an investment fund big enough that you can pull out $50,000 a year after taxes for the rest of your life. To make that happen, you should not be pulling out more than 6% of your assets a year. But you also got to calculate taxes. If you pull out 6% of your assets, the first thing you're going to have to do is pay the government because the government wants to get their fair share out of your retirement too. So if you pull out 6% of your assets, you're really only going to keep 4% because 2% is going to go to the government. I know all these vague numbers are getting confusing, so let me put some numbers on this so it makes more sense. If you need $50,000 a year after taxes to maintain your lifestyle, 
that means you got to be pulling out something like $75,000 a year before taxes. That way you're left with $50,000 after taxes. This $75,000 that you're pulling out a year should not be more than 6% of your total assets because you want to make sure that your investment fund, your whole nest egg is going to last you for the rest of your life. So if $75,000 is 6% of your total assets, then you do $75,000 divided by 6%. And this tells you that you will need $1.25 million in order to be able to live your life for the rest of your life at this lifestyle. There's other ways to fund your retirement besides just having a big nest egg. You can invest your million dollars into something that produces cash flow or passive income like real estate, but you gotta just find what's right for you. Now that you actually know how much money you need, how can you start off with $100 a week and turn it into a million dollars? For one, you do not have to be a stock picker, okay? Most people should not be in the business of trying to pick stocks to begin with. Most people who invest their money in the stock market by trying to pick stocks stocks lose money, not because they pick bad stocks, but because they get emotional. <laughs> Tesla, I love you, but why does your stock keep breaking my heart? The way that a lot of newer investors who don't have investing experience invest in stocks is they buy into a company that they think is cool, and then the stock starts to go up, which is great, and then something happens, the stock goes down for a little bit, and now you see your portfolio in the red, and now people start to panic, they get worried, they get anxiety, and so they panic sell their stock because they cannot stand seeing their investment at a loss. There's a lot more to investing in stocks than just picking good stocks. A simpler way to invest your money is to invest the bulk of your investment money into a low cost index fund that just matches the market and then use a little bit of your investment money to invest into individual companies and stocks that you like. An index fund is a fund that invests into a bunch of different stocks. Now instead of you trying to pick the best company to invest in, you can invest your money into this fund and this fund is now going to invest into a bunch of different stocks. So now you're getting exposure to a whole bunch of different stocks instead of just one. Back in the day, the common way to invest into a fund that gave you exposure to a lot of stocks was by investing your money into a fund that was managed by a very experienced but very expensive money manager. These are called actively managed funds and they have their place but they are very expensive and there are better options now. Your money manager is going to take a big chunk of your assets every single year whether you make money or you lose money and if they make you money, they're now also going to take a quarter of your profits. And if that wasn't bad enough, the vast majority of money managers cannot beat the market over the long run. So you're paying huge fees to get average returns. That's when low cost index funds came into the picture which allow you just to invest into the stock market. So if the stock market goes up, your index fund goes up. If the stock market goes down, your index fund goes down. And now you don't have to worry about paying a whole bunch of money to an expensive money manager. There are funds that you can buy off your stock brokerage that will give you exposure to literally the top 500 companies in the stock market. So when the stock market goes up, so does your fund. Now the bulk of your money is going into your investments instead of your money manager's pockets. Are you guaranteed to make money? No, investing has risks. You are never guaranteed to make money when you invest. You might even lose money, which is why you should always do your own due diligence and never blindly listen to a random guy on YouTube. But let's do the math using some historical numbers. If you invest $100 a month, that's $5,200 a year. Goldman Sachs did a study where they looked at the stock market over a period of 100 40 years and what they found is that over any 10 year period the stock market grew by on average 9.2 percent past performance is not a reliable indicator for future performance so let's say the stock market continues to go up on average over the long term not by 9.2 percent a year but by something like eight percent a year now you're investing $5,200 a year and you're getting an 8% return on your money every single year on average. And if you start this when you're 25 years old and you do this until you're 65, your $100 a week will grow from $100 a week to more than $1.4 million dollars. This doesn't mean that the stock market is going to always go up. This number factors in the fact that sometimes the stock market is going to go down and sometimes it's going to go up big. So it's the average. If you are older and you have not started planning for your retirement or putting money away for your investments, you're not out of luck. You just have to be more strategic. You can be more aggressive with your investments. That way you can try to get a better return on your money or you can try to earn more money. That way you can double or triple, maybe even quadruple your weekly investments. The best case scenario is to obviously start investing as soon as you get your first job. But the reality is most of us are never taught about money or investing when we're growing up. I was the same way. That's what pushed me to start Minority Mindset. You have to make deal with what cards you're dealt. 
Then you gotta understand the numbers, work backwards, and make a plan to make it happen. Before we jump back into the video, I do want to let you know that if you are interested in learning more about how you can be a successful stock market investor, we put together a program called Stock Market Insiders, which is a weekly stock market coaching session with one of our stock market coaches, and you also get access to our exclusive community of serious investors. I have spent tens of thousands of dollars on different classes and education to learn how to be good either in my business or with my money, which were helpful. I enjoyed these classes. But one of the things that I found even more helpful than these classes where you had to do everything yourself was when I had some sort of coaching where whether it was bi-weekly coaching or monthly coaching where I would learn from somebody and continue to stay up to date on what's going on. That way they can continue to provide me guidance in my business based off of everything that's going on right now. And that's exactly what we're trying to do with Stock Market Insiders. You get access to a weekly stock market coaching session where your stock market coaches are gonna teach you a new lesson every single week and then they'll be able to apply what you learned based on what's going on in the world right now. The most important thing to me when we were building Stock Market Insiders was our teachers, our coaches inside Stock Market Insiders because I wanted to make sure that our insiders are learning from real stock market teachers, not just people who can put up a fake social media front. And so our coaches inside Stock Market Insiders are people that have been investing their money for years. These are people that have had great returns and these are people that have the money to show their returns. And so we're talking about people that have at least six figures, if not millions of dollars in the market and in order for them to be a coach they've had to prove their success so every week you get access to a live coaching session you can ask your questions and you get access to an exclusive community and the best part is this is a very affordable program it costs less than the price of a dinner for two and you can try it out before you buy it I know you're probably skeptical I'm skeptical before I spend any money on the internet that's why we have a free 10-day trial that way you can try out stock market insiders you can see how it works you can attend the live coaching call you can join the discord community that way you can chat with other investors and then you can decide if this is right for you so if you want to learn more and see how you can get started with your free 10-day trial for stock market insiders i'll put the link to how you can do that in the description below There are four general ways that you can become a millionaire. The first way is you can be given this money. Maybe you win the lottery, maybe you win the genetic lottery, you have rich parents or you have a rich uncle who just gives you a million dollars. I can't help you out with who your parents are or who your rich family members are, so I can't give you much advice there, but that's one way that you can become a millionaire. Number two is you can make a million dollars from a job if you have a very high paying job. If you are an executive at a very big company, if you are a super high paid professional, maybe a super high paid doctor, you can make a million dollars. Now, again, this isn't something you can really do in a year, and this isn't something that I'm gonna be talking about in this video, but it's another way that you can become a millionaire. Number three is you can become a millionaire through a business. If you wanna make a million dollars in one year, then you have to generate $2,740 a day. Now, we have 365 days a year, so if you do $2,740 a day times 365 days, that's $1 million. So this is assuming that you're making your $2,700 a day every day a week, including weekends and including holidays. So if you sell a product and you make $10 per product, that means you have to sell 274 products a day if you want to make $2,740 a day, which would make you a million dollars in one year. Or if you want to make a million dollars a year from your investments, and let's assume that your investments are paying you a 9% annual return on your money. In that case, you have to have invested $11 million dollars and if you have 11 million dollars invested now you'd be making right around a million dollars a year now if you want to understand what it takes to become a millionaire in just a year the first thing you got to understand is what's the difference between making a million dollars a year versus being a millionaire making a million dollars a year is what i just talked about this means that your job is paying you a million dollars a year this means that you have your investments paying you a million dollars a year or this means that your business is making you a million dollars a year so a million dollars a year means every single year you're making a million dollars being a millionaire means that you are worth a million dollars the way that you calculate this is you take your assets and you subtract your liabilities and then that gives you your net worth so if you are worth a million dollars then you are a millionaire so now you can add up your assets 
Let's say you have $100,000 in the bank. You own your home worth $300,000. That's $400,000 worth of assets. And let's assume that you also have another $100,000 in the stock market. Now you have assets worth $500,000. And let's say you have $50,000 worth of debt. So $500,000 minus $50,000 is $450,000, which is your net worth. If you have assets minus liabilities worth more than a million dollars, now you are a millionaire. So you could have a million dollars worth of investments. You could have a million dollars worth of rental real estate that you own. And this money, if you have a 9% return a year, that is $90,000 a year that you're making. So you are a millionaire, but you're not making a million dollars a year. You have a million dollars worth of assets and these assets are still paying you, in this case, $90,000 a year, but you're not making a million dollars a year. So you gotta understand the difference between this and this. The next thing that you really have to understand is the hidden effort that it takes to become a millionaire. And the best way to think about that is just to think of an ice cube. So if you take an ice cube out of the freezer and you put it into somewhere where it is still cold, it is 10 degrees Fahrenheit, and now, if you take the temperature and you start to raise it up one degree at a time, you go from 10 degrees to 11 degrees to 12 degrees to 13 degrees to 14 degrees, the ice cube is not gonna melt. And you can keep raising the temperature, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. And at some point you might think, you know, I've raised the temperature so much but the ice cube hasn't changed a bit. It is still ice. And now you go 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31. And if you stop at 31, you're gonna say, well, I put in all this effort to melt the ice, but nothing has happened because the ice is still ice. And so you put in all this hidden effort between zero degrees up to 31 degrees, and you haven't seen any change yet because the ice is still ice. But as soon as you make that one little small change from 31 to 32 and 32 to 33, now all of a sudden, your ice is gonna start melting. And so all you had to go was just that one kind of little degree more, and now you hit that breaking point. You hit the melting point, and now this ice is gonna turn to water. And so the way to becoming a millionaire works the exact same way. You have all this hidden effort that you're gonna have to put in, all this hidden work that you're gonna have to put in that you might not see kind of where the results are, but as soon as you hit that breaking point, as soon as you hit the melting point, that's when the results come in. Like one person could be worth $999,000. They could have $999,000 worth of investments and still they're not a millionaire. And another person could be worth $100. For this person to go and become a millionaire, all this person has to do is get another $1,000 and now they're a millionaire. But for this person to become a millionaire, now they're gonna need essentially a whole million dollars. The thing that everybody sees and everybody gets excited about is how you go from 999,000 to a million dollars because now you're a millionaire. But the hard part and the thing that requires all the work is how do you go from here to here? The final steps are gonna happen faster and easier. And as you get closer to here, yeah, you'll be able to see much bigger returns in a year and go to that million dollar level. But when you're starting off here, going from here to here can take you a long time because you have to go through the learning curve. You have to learn how to attract more money. You have to learn how to invest money you have to learn how to grow your money and so here to here is where all the effort goes in and this is the process where everyone's trying to figure out how to become a millionaire overnight but there's a lot of work required because right now your ice cube is at 10 degrees and you got to figure out how can you get it up to 31 degrees because once you get to 31 degrees all you need is one degree more and now you're getting the big changes. Now you're gonna make the major changes because now you're hitting the tipping point. You hit that melting point where now you can really start to see the change. And in this case, that millionaire level. It is much easier to become a millionaire than it is to make a million dollars a year. Anybody can become a millionaire. All you need is time and the right financial education. Because now what you're gonna do is you're gonna take some of your money and you're gonna keep investing it. Now you're gonna earn more money and you're gonna keep investing that too. And now over time, you are gonna slowly turn your money into a million dollars by consistently growing your wealth, growing your money on the side, and keep fueling this fire by adding more money into that pit. Making a million dollars a year requires you to now work to increase your income. Now, a lot of people are not gonna be able to make a million dollars a year from their job alone. It's just facts. And so what you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to work to earn more money. Even two jobs are not gonna cut it for 99% of people. So if you wanna make a million dollars a year, you're gonna have to start your own business. You're gonna have to create your own product and you're gonna have to sell enough of this product to generate a million dollars a year. So there's more risk required here and you're gonna have to do different things than just work in a job, but it is possible. But here, 
This is possible for anyone when you have the right financial education. The last thing that I want you to understand about being a millionaire before we get into actually what you need to do is there's a difference between being a millionaire on paper and actually being a millionaire. So here's an example of that. Let's say you go out and you start investing your money and you buy yourself this rental property and you bought this property for a steal. You bought it for $150,000. Now, 10 years go by and let's assume that a lot of money flows into this neighborhood. You have new business is coming in, you have a lot of people that want to live here, and now all of a sudden the property values in this area start skyrocketing, and this property that you own is now worth on paper a million dollars. And so now you own a million dollar property, and you bought this property for $150,000, and this other money, this $150,000 to a million, is almost like imaginary money right now because that is what your property is worth. But you don't actually know that for sure until you sell your property because the price of any asset is determined by what it will actually sell for. Because you might think it's worth a million dollars, but if no one's willing to pay you a million dollars, then is it really worth a million dollars? No. But in this case, let's assume that your property is actually worth a million dollars and people are willing to pay you a million dollars. Now, you have this kind of like nest egg that's sitting there, this property that's worth a million dollars, but this money isn't in your bank account. I mean, you can't go out and spend this cash unless you pull out a refinance on this property and now you have this cash in the bank that you can go out use to spend, but now you have to pay this money back plus interest. It's the exact same thing in the stock market. If you go out and you find a really hot stock that you want to invest in, let's just call it company X. This can be whatever company you want and you put in $100,000 and a few years go by and this company takes off. This company goes all the way up tenfold and now you have a million dollars in the stock. Yeah, you have a million dollars on paper, but again, this million dollars isn't yours until you sell this property or you sell this stock. But you gotta remember here as well that just because you're worth a million dollars today doesn't necessarily mean you're gonna be worth a million dollars tomorrow here because the stock market could crash. If that happens and your investment gets cut in half, now you're no longer a millionaire. And so there are pros and cons here because yes, there's a risk to keeping all this cash in your hand because now your cash is gonna be in the way of inflation, but there's also a risk to keep your money in the investment because if the market crashes, if property values fall or if stock prices fall, now your investment value, your millionaire status could also fall as well. In general, when it comes to preserving your wealth over the long term, you want to have your money in assets, not cash, because cash is always losing value because as more money is printed, your cash gets diluted and your cash loses value. But assets over the long term go up. Yes, there can be crashes, but over the long term, if you have a good asset, it will hopefully continue to go up. This is where having a good strategy with your money and your investments is so important because you want to make sure that you're protected against anything. So this could mean investing your money for passive income or cash flow. That's these properties, even if property values fall, you still have enough cash flow to support you and your lifestyle. And that could also mean by diversifying your money into different assets or asset classes. That might mean having some money in stocks. That might be investing in different stock sectors. That might be investing in different stock markets across the world. That might mean investing in different assets like stocks and real estate, maybe cryptocurrency. Now, let's go back to the original question of how can you actually become a millionaire? Create a financial system for your money. I like to call it our 75, 15, 10 plan. This is one of the things that I recommend. You don't have to follow this plan exactly, but just one of my recommendations. What this says now is for every dollar that you earn, 75 cents is the maximum that you can spend. 15 cents is the minimum you should be investing, and 10 cents is the minimum you should be saving. Once you have a good savings cushion, emergency cushion, this could mean somewhere between three months and a year's worth of expenses, depending on your risk tolerance. You wanna take the saving money and put it here towards your investments, because your investments are what's gonna make you wealthy. And so the faster you can invest your money, the more aggressively that you can invest, the faster that you're gonna hit this million dollar number, or whatever number you're going for, that way you can build your wealth and stop working so much, because now you have your investments paying for your lifestyle. Now it's just a matter of math. If you can invest $625 a month and you can get a reasonable 8% return on your money, which is about the average stock market and real estate return, sometimes you'll see more, sometimes you'll see less, but that's kind of a good average. If you can maintain an average 8% return in 31 years, you will be a millionaire. If you can invest $1,000 a month, now it won't take you 31 years, assuming you can get the same 8% return. Now it's gonna take you right around 25 years to become a millionaire. If you can invest $2,000 a month, 
Now, if you get that same 8% return, it's gonna take you right around 18 years to become a millionaire. And just for some fun, let's assume now that you can invest $5,000 a month at the same 8% return. Now, it's gonna take you 10 years in order to become a millionaire. Now, obviously, it's gonna take more money for you to invest more money, and this is where, okay, you have a financial system. Now, if you wanna fuel this financial system, you have to have more money coming into your system. So, maybe you're making money from your job, and you can invest somewhere between $300 to $600 a month, depending on what your income is. If you wanna start investing more money, you gotta start making more money. So, if you wanna get to the million dollar figure faster, now, you gotta start earning more money because you're already investing your money on the side to grow your income. Now, you could invest your money at a higher rate, but if you're working a job, you're not gonna have the time to manage another full investment or kinda do these other active investments because you wanna work to just grow your income instead of just trying to grow your $625 monthly investment. So the two ways that you can get to that million dollar figure faster is one, invest more money, or two, invest more aggressively. Now, investing more aggressively comes with more risk, and that might not be something you're interested in or wanna put all the time in, so you might wanna focus on how you can grow this pie, how you can grow the amount of money that you're investing and the only way you can do that is by earning more money so what's the solution earn more money and now invest this more money that way you can become a millionaire now there's a few different ways that you can earn more money you can work harder at your job you can get a promotion you can try to get a raise and if you do these things this can give you more income that you have here that you can put more money towards your investments another option could be for you to get a certificate or to try to get a different job that's going to pay you more money or if you want to make money outside of a job now you can either get another job or you can try to start your own side hustle or side business there are hundreds of ways for you to go out and earn more money on the side. I mean, our team even put together a list of 113 ways that you can earn more money outside of your job. If you want to read that article, you can do it on our website, theminoritymindset.com, and I'll also link it for you in the description below. But you really need to just kind of figure out where your passions are, something that you like, because if it's something that you like and something that you're good at, then you can make more money because you're actually skilled at what you're doing. The internet makes this more accessible than ever. Now, just because it's accessible doesn't mean it's easy, but you can create create a brand around almost anything. You can create a brand around fitness, around finance. You can create a brand around cooking, around music. So if there's something that you like, you can build a brand around it. And if you can start to build a community or an audience, there are an unlimited ways to monetize. You can do advertising, you can do sponsorships, you can sell your own products, you can be an affiliate for other products. All these things can start generating you more money. Now, this isn't something that's gonna happen overnight. Again, it's like kind of melting the ice cube. It's gonna take a lot of time and a lot of work to kind of get to that point, the tipping point, where now you can start making good money but if you can put in that work, then it's a way for you to make money. And what you're doing doesn't have to be a digital company either. I mean, if you like making cakes, you can bake cakes and sell them to your friends, sell them to businesses and corporations when they have their events. And so you kind of just kind of figure out what you like and now turn this skill, turn this passion into something that can make you money. If you want to be a millionaire, you have to have a million dollars worth of assets. For you to have a million dollars worth of assets, you have to have some money. That way you can go in and buy assets. One way to get this money is from your job. But if this is not enough, or it's not gonna take you there fast enough, you gotta start making more money. How do you make more money? Well, now you can get more money from your job, you can work another job, or you can start a side business or a side hustle. So this side hustle is a way for you to earn more money. That way you have more money going into your funnel, more money going into investments. These are things that are gonna make you wealth while you're working to earn more money. So you earn more money and your money works to build you wealth. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, here's a video on things you need to know if you wanna become wealthy that I think you love and why I edit. Download our free guide on investing your money in the stock market. And as always, keep hustling. You have Robert Kiyosaki, who is essentially like finance everything, never pay for cash for anything, and then use your money to buy investments and have your investments pay for all of your stuff.